and welcome to our August edition of Sports Highlights. We are on the road at Norfolk State at the football coach's office of Dawson Odoms. Greg Picaveras along with Ray Price on the road here. Our show airs on Mondays at 7 a.m., 2 p.m. and 7 p.m. Weekends at 9 a.m. on Cox Cable 47, 517, all over social media, including YouTube. It's a pleasure now to talk to Dawson Odoms in his second year as head coach at Norfolk State. Good to see you. Always a pleasure. Thank you guys for having me. My pleasure. you got to be comfortable in your own office, first of all, Coach. <laughs> well, you know, it's summer practice and, you know, it's hot outside, but I'm very comfortable. And, again, I just want to thank you all for giving me this opportunity. Absolutely. Let's talk about your football background. You were born and raised in North Carolina. How did it all get started? Well, I grew up in Shelby, North Carolina. Uh, I played elementary football and went on to Crest High School and played for Mike Stewart, who still today I, I speak to. Uh, he's really the one that got our program turned around and, and really poured a lot into us as being a coach who was able to see him as a mentor and, and a father figure and really all my high school coaches were like that from from Ed Pila who coached me in basketball, James Bird was one of my basketball coaches. Uh, just having a community of people that, that put their arm around you and said, you know, we're not going to let you fail and that's what Crest High School has meant to me and, and still mean to a lot of young men today. Yeah, how about as far as recruiting Crest High School? Given the chance to be closer now, I, I think every since I've been a head coach, I've always had the opportunity to go back home and, and try to give somebody an opportunity that was given to me, an opportunity to go to school and, and play college football and, and not have to take out student loans. Uh, it's a talent-rich area. They always got players, and it, I'm blessed to be closer now to be able to still go home and recruit some of those great, talented young men. Yeah, and when you're involved in coaching at a young age, even playing at a young age too, you start developing offense, defense, special teams, and you pretty much been on all sides of the ball since uh, you were a kid. Exactly, and I, I think you you become a better coach when you've been on all three phases of the game. Uh, just being a defensive guy or offensive guy or a special teams guy, I think when you've been able to be a part of all three phases, it gives you a better sense of, of respect for each phase, but also from a time management standpoint of what's important and what allows you to win football games, uh, you realize that offense and defense is no greater than special teams, and special teams no greater than offense and defense. You've definitely paid your dues. We're talking to Dawson Odoms. He's the second-year head coach at Norfolk State. And as you got started, it wasn't easy. Right before COVID and uh, change in uh, administration as far as football coaching, players come and go all the time, attrition, but you made it happen. Well, exactly. I think when you look at the transition from where I was to where I am now, coming to Norfolk State University and having an opportunity to coach the Spartans, uh, took over a football team where guys haven't played or done anything in almost two years. And when you look at that, you, a lot of skills can diminish in two years. Uh, your development in the weight room, the way you look from a nutrition standpoint, from a strength and conditioning standpoint, uh, a lot of variables goes into being off for almost two years. But I still think this is a great place to be and give you opportunity to win football games and compete for championships. And I would not be here if it was not for uh, our great president here at Norfolk State, uh, Dr. Ga uh, Gaston, who's done a great job of leading this university. And I, I would not be here if it was not for our athletic director, Melody Webb, who ensured me that uh, they wanted to see football be successful. And I think that we have a recipe and a process that we follow that allow us to, to continue some success that we had last year. Right, even though you paid your dues and you've been in a lot of different schools, we'll name some of them in a few moments, it's just like the players are starting all over. You had to start all over because it's a lifestyle change for you as well. That never gets old and you had to make adjustments on the fly too. Well, and I think being a head coach is all about adjustments. I think you, no matter where you sit, you're gonna always have to adapt and adjust to the people that are around you. You got to adapt and adjust to the community, a new environment. and. One thing about it, we have a process, and we believe our process allow us to be successful no matter where we are, and because it's all built on adjusting and adapting. But some things in that process, we just can't be in the break because they're too vital to the success of the program. Football is always pivoting, especially head coaches. Greg Bickavera is talking to Dawson Odoms in his second year with Norfolk State. The season about to start for the fall of 2022. And uh, talk about your coaching staff, and uh, I know that's always important to get everybody on the same page. Well, that's 
that's big. You know, I think when you look at it from an offensive, defensive, special team standpoint, uh, we have some guys that I have coached with in the past, our defensive coordinator. Uh, Steven Adams has done a great job for us and continues to do a great job in, in building a leading young man. I think we're going to be much better. Uh, you got to think when you're implementing in a summer and it's the first time anybody ever heard it, you didn't have spring ball or anything, it's, it's kind of tough. And that first year was tough for us, but we can see the fruits of that labor paying off. And Coach Myers is going to take over the offense and he's going to do an outstanding job for us. Uh, we're going to be more open-minded as far as the quarterback position and what we're doing and how we're going to attack. Uh, we're going to really just take what defenses give us. If they give us the run, we're going to run. If they give us the pass, we're going to throw. So he's doing a great job of, of continuing to get our offense where it needs to be. And then Coach Marshall, who's handling our special teams, he was with me. Him and Coach Adams were with me before at Southern University. So to be able to have some of that continuity and some guys that you believe in that you worked with before, always give you a chance to feel comfortable in an uncomfortable environment. Absolutely. And uh, you talked about some of the schools and Coach has been, of course, he went to uh, Crest High School, no specific order, Clark, Atlanta, Southern, Gardner, Webb, Georgia Southern, Bethune, Cookman, North Carolina a and I guess, Coach, you take something from every school. Always. And I, I always pull from it. I think from being at Crest, Coach Stewart always, always believed in us that, you know, Everybody has something they can contribute to the team. It's our job as coaches to find that something. And I believe that you'll see me, I move guys around, I, I change positions to try to get them an opportunity to be successful. If you look at Steve Patton, who I worked for at Gardner Well, his biggest thing was, was the risk worth the reward? And I still use that saying today. I mean, that's all he talked about. And, and that applies to life and that applies to football. And when I was at Clark Atlanta, I was with Tracy Ham, who helped make Georgia Southern famous. Uh, he's one of the greater people that I ever been around. I still talk to him every now and then. Uh, he the one gave me a chance to be a defensive coordinator and I'm forever grateful to that. And Paul Johnson was just a mastermind that, you know, his whole thing was do 10 things a hundred times, not a hundred things 10 times. Mm -hmm. And I hold on to that. And then I had Alonzo Lee, who I worked for, and Lee Fobbs, who I worked for at a and And those guys gave me an opportunity to, to grow into the person I am today, spiritually and as a man, because they have been in HBCU for a long time. And I was able to pick their brains. Alonzo Lee was a great defensive mind. Fobbs was a was a great offensive mind and just being able to be around those guys helped me grow into the person that I am today. And then Stump Mitchell, who gave me the opportunity at Southern. I mean, you think about it, he's one of the uh, great running backs of the NFL, kick returners, uh, just a great man. And he allowed me a chance to come and be his defensive coordinator. And his biggest thing was, is that discipline, discipline, discipline. And I think that's what I hang my hat on today is just being able to get young men motivated. But discipline is something I think you got to have if you're going to be a leader of men. That's mental and physical discipline. Yes. Both. Because we're thrown curveballs every single day in life. It's how you respond to them. Correct. Now, you talk about Stump Mitchell. I'm sure he gave you a little help with special teams, too. Kind of gave you his slant towards special teams. Well, and that was just the time and how much time we invested in special teams. And I was a special team coordinator on my journey and just knowing that as a head coach, I think sometimes special teams is overlooked. Mm -hmm. uh, I really put an emphasis on it. I want our football team to know how important special teams are and that our great players got to play special teams. As the head coach, you have to look at everything, you know, the off season, the in season adjustments, players, attitudes, personal lives, because if your personal life is going through a rough time as a player, it can affect game day for 60 minutes. People have no idea how difficult it is as a head coach and your assistants to ground young men because nobody knows, especially at high school or college, what they're going through before they step on the field. Well, I think when you look at it, you can even look at our world today. I think the landscape as it re um, refers to the mental capacity of the individuals and what they can handle and cannot handle is totally different than my upbringing. So you have to be understanding of these young men that it's, it's more to life than just going to school and playing football. And I really think we could be a pioneer. Um, we do have a therapist that works with our football team, but we could be a pioneer as it relates to HBCUs and LCS schools who begin to take the bull by the horn and say, you know what, 
we're going to really grow in our mental health department because we understand not only in athletics, but our regular students need that as well. They need a way to release. They need someone that they communicate to because I really believe that we don't know the effects of this uh, COVID, but it affected everybody differently. And the world today is affecting everybody differently. And these young men and women that we deal with at Norfolk State need outlets. And I'm one of the ones that's very supportive of mental health, especially at Norfolk State University. Yeah, the good thing about the football players are they're getting exercise too, which is great for mental health. People say go for a walk, go for a swim, play basketball, play tennis, whatever, but they're getting their exercise. But like you said, for the students, they need an outlet from going to school all week too. And football gives them that type of therapy like they can cheer or they can scream and yell and nobody's going to say anything. Well, one of my players said, you know, coach playing football gives me an outlet, but it also creates pressure. It creates some some pressure for me as well. Mm -hmm. So we understand that. And, you know, it's almost like that drill sergeant. You know, you, you got your troops. They come in. You train them. You, you're trying to get them ready for activities that they're going to have to revert back to their training. And football does that. Football allows us to coach guys and allow them to prepare prepare them for life and we understand that and as these guys continue to go forward uh, I think when companies look at who they want to hire when you put football on your resume I think with, with good grades and a good person, you get a great leader because no other sport prepare you for life like this one. Yeah, physically, mentally, in the heat, and the winter, yeah. the grind of it. Before we go to our, our break, do you like to delegate as a head coach or you like to, when the offense is on the field, you're keeping an eye on the offense, you're not, what are you doing during the course of the entire game? Are you talking to the assistants, the players, multitasking? But you've got to see and keep an eye on everything. Well, I'm a defensive guy, and I, I coach a position as well. So uh, I let those guys coach, and then we collaborate as a group uh, what we think we need to do and how we need to do it. Uh, I'm not a micromanager. I think you hire guys, and you allow people a chance to do the job. And I think you have to be, uh, if you ask me what kind of leader I am, I'm one of those guys that interject when it need to be. I get on you when it need to be, and I love you mostly when I when I need to. And I think that's one of the biggest components of our program is the amount of love that we have in it. Very nice. All right, we'll take a break. Come back with uh, second-year head coach Dawson Odoms right here in his office at Norfolk State. Sports highlights on the road right here for our August edition. Stay tuned. I want to be a historian. I want to be a marine scientist. I want to be an oceanographer. I want to be an astronaut. I want to be a zoologist. I want to be an engineer. Virginia is rich in educational resources. Virginia is for. Virginia is for. Virginia is for. Virginia is for. Virginia is for, Virginia is for learners. You're watching NNPS TV. Catch sports highlights on Mondays at 7, 2, and 7, and on Saturdays and Sundays at 9 a.m. Visit us online at NNPSTV.com to view all your favorite episodes. NNPS TV, watching education happen. And welcome back to our second segment of Sports Highlights on the Road, our August edition. Glad you're with us, talking to Dawson Odoms, the head football coach at Norfolk State. We've had a chance to interview several coaches here over the years. Always a pleasure. Dawson, good to see you again. Let's get right into it. The schedule is right here. I mean, you pretty much started thinking about Marshall as soon as the season was over last year, I guess. The schedule is important for a coach and an AD and a president to all put it together. 
Well, exactly. And I think we have a schedule that's 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 challenging and give us an opportunity to comp compete at a high level and really find out about our football team. But I really think as we get through our FBS opponents, then we start getting into FCS. And I think all the teams on our schedule, we're very comparable to each other. So I think we have an opportunity this year with not a lot of people knowing about our football team. We lost some key components last year. Uh, we got a lot of new faces. Uh, our numbers are up finally. Uh, I really think that's important because you don't have the time to train that you used to have. And, and guys don't have the training tables and some of the other things that they got to have to build their bodies. So you, you need people. And I really believe that if you can win that war with with nutrition over time. And that's what we're trying to do is have as many guys ready to play because we know some guys go break down. But I'm really excited about this football team and the schedule that we're going to have going into this 2022 season. Well, that's a great point. Attrition, you're going to lose people and nutrition both. But a lot of times, and I'm glad you brought that up, a lot of guys, young men now, they have to work out on their own. Like you said, you can't, you're always not going to be there, you know, on top of them, keeping an eye on them. They have to almost self-sustain, self-motivate and and do what they got to do before they even come here will make their life a lot easier. Well, correct. And I, I really think that we're trying to build our program and we're chopping away at it. And our athletic director, uh, Ms. Webb, has done a great job of providing us with the resources that we need to be able to be here for the summer. Uh, I think in June we had about 35 guys that were here working out. And then we got an entire team here in July, which is over 100 guys, which really given us a chance to build some continuity and get better and, and just work in these conditions because it's hard to put uh, a puzzle together this many pieces if they don't work together. So we're very grateful for the opportunity to have our team here this summer. And I really think that helped us last year and now we're carrying over into into this season. I really think that's going to help us as we continue to go. The more we can get our guys here together in the summer, the more weights you can lift, the more training you can have, continue to add the nutrition part of it you're going to see us not not build a team, but build a program. Yeah, it's building relationships, too. And like you said, they have to get used to the coaching staff. The players have to get used to each other. They have to like each other, right, Coach? I mean, you can't have a person not liking his fellow teammate because that can affect everything. It does affect everything. Uh, I, I'm also sure you've seen me. it. Yes, all the time. You have to get to know each other because if we're going to fight for each other, I, I really need to know what I'm fighting for you. Uh, a lot of guys have different reasons, and we always say, what's your why? What's your purpose? Why are you doing this? And we give our team a chance to, to tell each other why, uh, because your why may be totally different than mine. I could be doing it because, you know, Coach, they always said I couldn't do it, or you could be doing it because, Coach, this is all I ever done. But when you know your teammates why, you have a chance to, to get in that foxhole together and say, you know what? You can't beat them by yourself, but together we can. And just building that, that combination of what we call team. And that's what everything is. And I believe that, that we achieve a whole lot more when we do it as a team. Right. Speaking of the team, they have got Marshall. James Madison is a perennial power. I mean, Marshall, several years ago, played Ohio State one time. Hampton University, which is always a rival. They're local, although they're not in the same conference. A lot of these guys know each other. Of course, I think when you look at it, we probably know somebody on every team that we're mm -hmm. going to play. Uh, the, when you look at the players and where they're coming from and uh, geographically where we recruit, and we recruit a lot from, uh, of course, Virginia, which is our home recruiting base. Uh, we go to North Carolina, we go to Maryland, we go to D.C., got kids from South Carolina, Florida. So we're trying to build a, a national contender, and I really think we can do that. Uh, we're young, but I do think this beginning schedule from a non-conference standpoint is going to challenge us. But why would you play this game if you weren't looking for some challenges? Right. You had a challenge your first year, pre-COVID, post-COVID, getting a new staff, new players. And you see this right here, folks. The only difference between a good and a bad day is your attitude. And that's true with relationships and life in general, in or out of sports. Well, that's because that's something we control. Uh, and I really think that in uh, one of my pet peeves is control the controllable. And I think that's big in life. I think a lot of young men try to control things that they cannot and just teach them how to respond. Uh, a lot of times everybody says it's how you react, but it's really how you respond to the reaction and just really getting these young men a mindset that gives them an opportunity to say, you know what, 
We represent our families, we represent the program, we represent Norfolk State University, and for the most part, we represent ourselves. And that's important, and just getting them back to the basis of understanding that in your decision making. And that's what attitude is all about. Attitude is nothing but a decision, and we have the ability to control ours, whether it's good or bad. That's so true because what happened yesterday, today can affect tomorrow. And you like I said, control the controllables. People can let you down. Life can let you down. But it's how resilient that person's going to be on and off the football field. It's the before and after that a lot of times people need to realize it's not just game day. It's the before and after in life. But the attitude, it all starts with practice. You know, you win in practice. No doubt. Confidence. I think when you're consistent as a football player, a consistent person in life, you're going to have more confidence in somebody that's not consistent. And your attitude is going to be more on the positive side. Also, it's about your who's surrounding you. What circle do you have that's surrounding you? Uh, is it positive people? Is it negative people? And all those things have an effect on your attitude. I really believe that everything about it, life is a choice. Uh, you can choose it to whether or not something affects you, but you also can choose it how you allow it to affect you. And, and we build those things in our, in our program. And Ms. G, who's our therapist, uh, she does an outstanding job of helping us get that mental that mental coaching across to our players because the game is more mental now than it has ever been. And we really try to have that component a part of what we're doing every day. And that's so important because you and your assistants have to be on the same page when you talk to these young men because if you're saying one thing and somebody else is saying another thing, then everybody's going in different directions. The coach still has to be the, the leader. No doubt. And I think that's a good sign of a team uh, is that I, I can tell you whether or not it's a good team when I look at a team and how they dress. Uh, something so small can tell me how close a team really is, and, but it also tell me what's the driving force. Uh, when you look at a team and all their shirt tails are tucked in, everybody's got on the same thing, that's gonna tell you that's a team of at least uniformity and discipline. And I look at a team that don't have that, I can also say, hey, I don't really know how disciplined that football team is. Because I was always taught that you know, perception is something. It's not everything, but it is something. And you have the right to control that perception. Whether you're an 0 11 team or 11 and 0 team, we can change that perception based on some of the little things that we do in our program. I'm so glad you brought that up because, you know, uniform is a uniform. It's yep. not mix and match. I remember I talked to Jay Paterno, Joe's yep. son, a long time ago. He says, when you turn the TV on, you know Penn State's playing. Yep. Blue and white, 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 or Southern Cal, or certain teams, Alabama. Other ones like to change like the weather does, but you're green, gold, and white. Yep. And um, if somebody's wearing different shoes or different socks, it looks like a different team. I'm glad you brought that up. Yes, and I, I believe in being collectively one. Uh, and I learned that, you know, as a school teacher is that, you know, when I left North Carolina and I went to Louisiana, my kids was the first time they went to a school and everybody had on uniforms. And, I, and you know, me growing up, I was like, what, what kind of, this a military school? But not everybody has the same things. And I think as a culture, we can control that. And they tried to control it in Louisiana with, you know, this kid not being able to have versus this kid being able to have. And everybody get a chance to wear uniforms. And now it creates some excitement. You can identify when somebody's not supposed to be on the school grounds versus everybody wearing whatever they want to and other people mixing in. So I really believe in that. And I think that's the military approach. And I love our military. And I think that's one of the greatest things about uh, our United States military is that we're going to look alike. The Navy's going to look like the Navy. The Marines going to look like the Marines. The Army going to look like the Army. Coast Guard going to look like the Coast Guard. And I think dress is how we tell who's who. Yeah, because you can't be an outlier on game day. That's Correct. Not, that's, that's too late when you're already doing that. Uh, we mentioned recruiting. This area is known for players that have gone on to college in the NFL. So does that help having it right here in your backyard? You got Virginia Beach, you got Norfolk, you got the Peninsula. The 757 has always been known for great players. Uh, it's a great recruiting. I, I think in your backyard, I think when you take over a job, you say first and foremost, especially as a football coach, is it a fertile recruiting ground? And I think when you say what states had a fertile recruiting ground, Virginia has to be mentioned with some of those other states. Not, we don't have the same capacity as it relates to total people living here, but as far as production, the 757 can hold its own against anybody in any state. Yeah, you look at all the schools, the, the smaller schools, the, the bigger schools, you know, they have all these different divisions now. Talent is talent. 
it, at the end of the day, and I think when you look at the state of Virginia, uh, when you look at the two uh, powerhouses that we have here in Virginia Tech and UVA, and then you look at our group of six schools that we have in ODU and Liberty and having the chance and all the FCS and Division II schools, it's enough talent in the state of Virginia to go around. A lot of times you look at the NFL, a lot of them are from <clears throat> the smaller schools that succeed in the NFL. They might be overlooked by Ohio State or Michigan, but they're, they're getting it done on game day. So you never know until you evaluate the player. Uh, no doubt. My saying is be a, be a big fish in a small pond. And I think when you look at some of these guys that's in FCS, they're FCS All-Americans, and you know, with the transfer portal, guys are able to go where they want to go. And uh, I really believe if, you, if they stay at some of these FCS schools and Division II schools and just continue to be dominant, the NFL pay people to find you. Your job is to be seen. Yeah. And I believe Norfolk State gives you an opportunity to be seen. And if you come and do what you're supposed to, you can reach those same dreams and goals. Do you like that name, image, likeness? Some people do, some people don't. Well, I think it has its benefits. Yeah. Uh, I really think it's beneficial for the players uh, if it's used for the right reasons. And I do think that sometimes it, it can be blown out of proportion. But if you're doing it for the right reasons, we're all for these players having as much success financially as they can receive. And finally, what are you trying to improve from last year? And what is your advice for people in general in life and also sports? Well, we're trying to improve on our record uh, and how we go about doing that is just becoming a more disciplined football team. Uh, we think we're, we're a young football team, but we think we have a lot of talent. We just got to put this puzzle together. Uh, just my, my biggest thing, my advice to people would be, be who you are, be great where your feet are. Uh, I call it chop wood, carry water, which is falling in love with the process. Mm -hmm. Whether that's a process of marriage, whether it's a process at work, whether that's a process of you being a mother or a father. Whatever your process is, you fall in love with it and other people will too. There you go. All right, very successful. In his second year as the head football coach at Norfolk State, uh, Dawson Odoms, thank you for your time, your talent, and your treasure as well, and learning about this great program and also your life as well. That right there, Dawson Odom is from Norfolk State University. His sports highlights on the road, our featured showcase guest right here as the 2022 season right around the corner as they get ready for Marshall, James Madison, and Hampton in the entire MEAC schedule. So I want to thank Matt Mahalik, also Ray Price, and of course the coach. I'm Greg Bicavaris. Happy August, and we'll talk to you soon.